interface most of the time with whoever you're working with. Okay? So, why am I saying this? Of recent, of course, Skype, having been bought by eBay, is now in a lawsuit. That lawsuit has to do with the powers that be went to the uh, previous owners of the engine and said, how would you like to sue for use of your, your stuff? So they've launched this uh, lawsuit. I think maybe being encouraged by the people that encourage them, being the government, there may be some issues that they want, which is, hey, unlock your, your, your uh, encryption so that we can get in there and listen. So I think maybe a lot of it has to do not just with the uh, people that developed it and the people that are in the lawsuit, but maybe being encouraged by certain governments to open up Skype so they can monitor it because it is encrypted. Okay. So when it comes to communications yesterday morning, Skype went down. It made ripples and ripples of news across certain venues of the Internet. Now, nothing is 100%, not your local phone company, not your long-distance provider, nobody. But we have options. And what I'm encouraging people to do right now is this is not going to be less normal. This is going to become more often. We're going to have communication systems interrupted. And I'm even going to suggest to our Gusog here real soon that we all have ourselves an alternative so that we can communicate with each other at least and be able to uh, call and talk to each other, even if we can't get callers to call in and so forth, so that we can run and communicate. What if, what if Skype went down in an emergency? What if Skype went down in your business? What if Skype went down during a critical venture of future events coming and you had not planned for contingencies? So what should you do? I'm encouraging people to investigate options. And let me give you one. One of them is called UMA. Now, this still means that you have to have Internet. So I'm just talking right now about Internet-based communication systems. But you don't have to use Skype. Gizmo Project used to be available. But Gizmo Project just recently got bought out by, guess who? Google. Not eBay, but Google. Yeah, there's money behind it, but guess who's buying up the big, the bigger voice over Internet? The big snooping browser people and eBay. All these giants are buying these communication systems because they're lucrative. It's the future. It's the industry of the decade. So what do we need to do? First of all, you can go to other services besides Skype on the Internet. One of them is called UMA, O-O-M-A doesn't even need a computer, but it does need Internet connection. It has a little box, no bigger than a, than a small answering machine device, and it has a keypad on it for numbers, and it's like an answering machine, only, in fact, it's a dialing out, dialing in. You can hook your computer up to it. You can actually make phone calls over the Internet, or you can hook up a regular phone, and you can, of course, hook up phones that are cordless. And it operates very simple for those that are really having, well, let's just say, that struggle with the use of computers or are not Internet savvy or computer savvy. They can still use voice over Internet. Well, what's it cost? In American dollars, it's, about, it's around $200. What does that get you? You get two phone numbers. And you get two boxes. One of them is the master. The other one is slaved off of it and is a separate box that you can put in another room and the other line can be for you know uh, the teenagers use or whatever but that second one comes with it for about two hundred dollars how much a month zero that's two hundred forever not a year not a month forever and you get the equipment very dependable high quality equipment and it does sound pretty decent it's internet based so there's one that is available to you. If you do a search for VoIP, if you just type in Skype competitors on the Internet, you'll find gobs of choices. 
and you'll have software packages, and they have to have uh, accounts set up with Internet providers that will make them run on the Internet. So it's not just as easy as you think. Skype's kind of an all-in-one package. There are new ones coming up. Some are hooked up to Yahoo. I'm not interested in that. Yahoo's that uh, beast, part of the beast system that turned over everybody's emails, if you recall. So, boy, if you have a Yahoo account, go to, to Gmail. If you really want to be private, go to Mail Vault. Mail Vault. Okay. Further on communication, sometimes and at some point we might not be able to use Internet. None of us. The communities talking to and we are talking about communities, aren't we? We are talking about getting groups of people together. Uh, we've got uh, a new one that's uh, talking about uh, getting together on a uh, sustainable farm in northern Ohio. So, by the way, if you are interested in that, let us know. We'll get you in contact with those people. Of course, we have Montana. We have Texas. We have a new one that I'm not allowed to talk about, but it's being philanthropically funded with millions of dollars. And there's six of these communities planned. I can tell you about it soon. But we're going to talk about communities in a general way in a little bit. But communications between communities without Internet will either mean you have to use cell phones. Oh, well, what if they're gone? And obviously a regular telephone system. But what I suggest is that you take the power and responsibility to provide the means for it all. What does that mean? That means you provide the power supply and you provide the ability to transmit and you provide your own ability to receive without any wires or anything in between. Well, how does that work? Well, that's usually called amateur or ham radio. So what is ham radio? Well, it just use radios, and there are different kinds of radios, and some radios only listen. Now, I know this sounds real basic, but there are shortwave radios that you can just listen on, and that will get you information. I don't know if very many of you have ever been captured, doubt that, like I have, or locked up in a foreign country without having a language, or what if you got stuck in a disaster underground, no outside communications, and you don't know what's going on? Actually, the intrigue and the mystery can be very overcoming. Imagine losing contact, not knowing what's going on out there. That would be disastrous, wouldn't it? So when we lose contact with people and we haven't made preparations for a rendezvous spot, that wasn't very wise. Also, when we haven't made preparations for alternative means of communications, we haven't been prudent just even at the family level. So what we do at the family level is have family radios and have the batteries recharge and make them always available. When they leave, we always depend on, guess what, cell phones. Well, family radios only go a mile, maybe two if you're lucky. But what goes even further are ham radios. A two-meter radio can be in several forms. Two meters is a frequency range, and that happens to be a very quiet FM-like sound. It's not like AM radio with all the, the uh, crackles of the lightning coming in and the hissing. It's very quiet like FM. So two meter FM is really easy to use, and you can get a small one that goes in your car. You can even have a little thing go under the seat and a little thing goes on the dashboard. You can have them in your hand or even as small enough to go into your shirt pocket. Bigger ones, of course, can be put on the desk. And they're different powers, and they are used in different ways, but they can reach several miles. In fact, in the United States, I've talked from one state to another the length of an entire state in the Midwest, and that's pretty good with independent communications. That's called two-meter. Well, two-meter radios are going to be coming up on a community website soon, and we're going to have a community website. I'm also going to provide uh, some links to these companies 
uh, for Hans to put up on Argusog 